today I'm going to talk about VR and look at some of the latest VR tech. As most of you know, I'm not a gamer. So I do have a bit of an outsider's perspective and a heavy amount of skepticism. I have yet to be convinced VR is even something I want in my home, let alone any particular type of VR hardware. If you are an avid VR gamer, this will probably isn't for you. If you are a tech enthusiast who indulges in a little casual gaming and is curious about VR technology, you and I are probably on the same page. What I'm going to look at today is the Apower VR headset. These are crowdfunding on Kickstarter at the moment. I first played around with VR glasses at the local mall years and years ago. Since then, I've never owned a pair myself, but I have tried friend setups every so often and have seen the tech slowly progress. I'm really interested to see where we are now. Before I tried it out, let's get up to speed a bit on VR headsets. VR headsets are currently divided into two categories, standalone and tether. Standalone has its own internal computer to run the VR apps, about as powerful as a high-end mobile phone. Tether headsets or PC VR are designed to attach to your computer so you can run much more powerful applications at the cost of extra cable clutter. I'm looking at the Tether version of the Apower VR headset today, designed for those higher-end apps, although as an added feature, it can also be connected to your mobile phone. This is nice for watching movies and 360 videos like the ones I made for this channel. A power just offers the headset portion of the VR system. I'm going to be using the hand controllers for the HTC Vive. Now, when we're viewing some other products like mobile phones, you've heard me be a little dismissive of specs in favor of user experiments. Not true for VR headsets. In VR, specifications make a huge difference and are very much representative of real-world performance in ways I find they generally aren't for mobile phones. So let's look at those specs carefully. The headset weighs 200 grams. The display is micro OLED, resolution 5K or 2560 by 2560 per eye, 5120 by 2560 combined. Of course, that only applies if you have the right hardware to drive it. If you want to connect to your laptop and play video games, you have to find the right laptop with the right settings to go with it so that it can support this. That can be a bit of an adventure. With the right hardware, the refresh rate is up to 120 hertz. The FOV is 95 degrees. Okay, know that this is the compromise back. We're going to get back to it. Next, PPI which stands for pixel per inch is 3514 and gamut is 90% DCP-IP3 equivalent to 127% RGB. I have no way to verify that, but if it's even close to that, it's really good color performance. Okay, so let's cut through all that, save some time. In short, there's no free lunch in life. These are 5K high refresh rates, great PPI, great color, and super lightweight. What's the catch? FOV or feel a wheel. That's the catch. No funny business, no fine print. They are straight up about it. 95 degree FOV is right there. That's how they're getting the lightweight and higher specs. It doesn't have the larger, heavier optics that 110 degrees require. 110 degrees is basically full field of view and what a lot of other headsets aim for. Now, that's not a bad call. It may not be a good call either. It's very subjective. The VR headset experience is largely made up of headset weight and comfort, resolution, PPI, refresh rate, and field of view. Tracking and lag are separate issues. 
you can max out all of those bags and ignore headset weight and comfort, basically strap a very expensive brick to your head. But the problem with that is, a heavy headset with optimal specs may not make for an optimal immersive VR experiments because, well, you can't ignore that you have a brick strap to your head and enjoy yourself. So manufacturers balance those numbers. A power made an interesting call when they decided to sacrifice some very fringe peripheral vision and get significant returns in weight, cost, and resolution for it. Trade-offs suck, but they are required in any kind of wearable, and this is a smart, interesting trade-off. But it's definitely not for everyone. That said, if high FOV is what makes VR work for you, this isn't the headset for you. For me, bulky headsets kill the experiments and I'm used to wearing sharp glasses. So losing a little FOV and getting higher resolution at a lower cost is basically a great trade-off as far as I'm concerned. What I have here is the tracker. It attaches to the headset. 75 grams, so in total with the VR glasses, it is 275 grams. Again, this works with the HTC base station and controllers. The base stations basically just triangulate the headset and handset controllers in 3D space. On the side of the headset here, I have a 3.5mm earphone jack for pirate plate and a sorting knob for adjusting the tightness volumes, brightness, etc. Alright, this is something I want to show you. This is a mask. It's replaceable for the, from the original one. The original one is made out of uh, foam and plastic. But the new one, it, it's also made out of foam, but uh, they added a piece of cloth on top of it. And this part is soft, it's TPU and the frame is PP. And uh, you can just swap, swap it out to change it. If you uh, support them if on Kickstarter, right now they have a Kickstarter campaign. I think they still have like a couple of days left. And if you choose to buy it from there, you will get one for free. But later, they will also add this as an accessory on their official website. All right, now I'm in my media room where I'm going to use as a VR room. I have downloaded several software from the Steam VR uh, store. I'm going to show you, demo it with the power VR glasses. Let's take a look at some of the software I download. So virtual desktop. Virtual desktop is like an external settings for adjust the, adjusting the power glasses. You can adjust the screen size, the screen brightness, distance curve. You can also change the audio when you play game, video games or watch movies. You can turn it up and down. And more important for me is here you can see 360 photos and videos. You can just drag and drop 360 video here to play or you can paste the YouTube URL. Because I took a lot of 360 videos and I often post it on YouTube, but I've never watched it with the VR glasses. I just drag it around on my computer. So let's take a look with the uh, VR glasses. I've never do it before. That's me. Shopping with my girlfriend, Lee Jong Woo is like yesterday. So th that's my girlfriend Kim, and I can look around. I can see the ceiling. I can see the meat. I can see the people behind me. I can see their reaction. A lot of people who came to watch my 360 videos sometimes it's for the uh, 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 people's reaction. Sometimes it's not just me. So. I'm sure I'm looking at my foot now, <laughs> but it seems so realistic. You can buy groceries here. They have a lot of varieties. And after that, I came to the barbecue section in this mall. It is pretty cool. So you can go to this barbecue area where they have all the cookery for you. You just 
uh, bring the stuff you got from the supermarket. See, I am looking down, I'm grilling some meat. It seems like yesterday once more. Next, I am going to show you something else. Okay, right now I am in the shooter game. Oh, it's better to stand than uh, deal. So standing is better than <laughs> like also. Uh, most of the people when they play video games, I think they stand. They don't just like sit around all day long. I have that couch behind me, but so there is a quick start tips here with the with this first. Yes, teleport. Okay, I can select all the scenes. See, it's all the scenario teleport. And then low scene. Oh wow! All right, let's take a look at the surroundings. Let's tell me teleport. There is the giant target in front of me. Right uh, next to me is the target controller. Choose this one. Okay. And then this is the score. Fly out the magazine and put another one in. Okay. Okay, one out of ammo and let's click another one. Grab another one. Oh. Ow! Make it back up. Make it up. That's it. No more ammo out. Drop it. Let's just go to Half Light X now. Half Light X. Okay, continue. Games you can select. Um, because I'm not connected on the internet and play with anybody, you can see it's a single game, you can choose any uh, chapter. Okay. That's my foot. I really want to walk for it, but I'm free I'll bump into the laptop. Okay. There's a giant map, lo map loading. Okay. Wow, this is pretty cool, man. I'm gonna make this device in real life. Okay, that's my gun. No ammo. See how well this is. I really like this. It detects the highway, maybe? Okay, let's check the zombie out. Is this scary? It's dead. General, I usually am not so, I like those girls like, eh, so scary. Take a look, there are lots of zombies. There is a zombie over there. Another dead person. Okay, what? Take the magazine, okay. Ow! Okay. God damn it. <laughs> Press button or pull side or two. Sorry, that person. I can look around. Oh, there's something on the box. Let's open it. Okay. And then, let me go back. Let me enter this room. Hmm. 
scary. I cannot just teleport inside. Okay. I can look around here as free as sorry, okay. Okay, pick up, pick it up. Pick it up! <laughs> Ow! Okay, what's in there? What's in this box? Any ammo? Empty box, never mind. Okay. Wow. Is that? Nothing. Empty bucket. Nothing useful. Okay. How to switch to multi Okay. Ooh. Open the gate. Quick game. Next, let's, let's do something else. So, blocks is not a game. This is where you actually create like 3D objects over here. You see, I've got a cube. I can hold to move world. I can make it smaller. I can enlarge it. See, I can select different objects. I can select this one. I can make it larger. Okay, I can change the shape. And I can paint it. Paint it blue. Blue. Paint it green. I can grab this too. Place it here. Insert shape. Erase, if I don't like this, erase, erase, erase. I can undo it. We do, undo, we do, undo, we do. It's pretty much more simpler than dealing with the games, that's for sure. You can modify it, you can change its curve. You see, it shows you the edges, then you can change it. Use this not only to play games, but we can also use it for work. Media conference, modifying models, 3D models. If you own a 3D printer at home, you can do it in virtual VR spaces. And knowing that you can do that, it's pretty cool. Uh, another version of uh, 3D modeling tools but this one is more high-end, like it's more complicated than the first one. Load one of the files I put in the app. Please stand by. Oh, wow. So this is my key. The key model I place it in is huge. Let's go. It's smaller and smaller and smaller. It's pretty huge right now when you load the model here. Okay, now you can see when I scale it down. This is the key. Okay, let's put it here. So remember this, when I did my CNC video, I uh, cut this. I cut this model and I can just load the model here and I can modify it. Let's see what else it can do. So this one is much high end than the one I just show you blocks. Here, ink, run stroke, speed. So you see the little stroke in the air. Import models. 
Oh, some actual motor. Okay, go. It's in front of me now. Oh, this is the manne mannequin and the motor. I have to scale down again. I'm not gonna do that for now. right now. I'm just going to. Oh, that's the motor over here, and this is the mannequin. And I can do the stroke in the air. Okay, pros and cons. Cons. Field of view. They are lightweight, great image quality, fully immersive, great value. But you are missing out on that fringe of peripheral vision. The problem is, this is entirely subjective. It's an absolute deal killer for some and hardly noticeable for others. I hate heavy headsets a whole lot more than I need that fringe. This is less than half the weight of competing headsets. It's perfect for me, but I have to be honest, a lot of people put a lot of stock in that FOV number. The second con is not really a con of the headset, but the technology itself. The power can only perform as well as the computer driving it. The lower specs on a lot of headsets are a more realistic reflection of the kind of computers typically used to control them. High spec headsets only make sense if people use high spec computers to drive them and most don't. You are either need to own a good computer or be willing to buy one in order to get the best performance out of this. It's $700 plus the cost of a computer to make it all work if you don't have one. That's why the standalone version may be worth a look, but that's outside the scope of this review. Pros. Okay, so when you have a lot of long hair, those heavy headsets shift around and don't stay in place very well. My neck is not going to be able to comfortable supporting the same kind of weight a thick guy's neck can for periods of time without cramping. Yes, these are personal things, but that's the perspective I bring. Headset weight is a make or break proposition for me. It's why I did not invest in VR up until now. They simply were not comfortable enough for immersion. Now, a lot of you are big strong dudes and maybe you don't know this, but I think if someone is doing hours a day, that's going to add up and have a real effect on usability. I think that the lightweight of this is a real game changer. The build quality is also excellent, but honestly, in general, most of the headsets made right now are fairly well built. That's not going to set this apart. Comfort and image quality really does. Finally, border overview. Is home VR worth it? When people used to ask me why I don't game or use VR, I always joked because my life is better which is only half a joke. I live in the most cyberpunk city in the world, have my avatar with the boot slider set to max and all the cool clothes. I can pet the dog, it's great. But these last two years, things are different. I stopped traveling outside my city for one, spend less time going out to drink and socialize in person. Some people have spent months at home on lockdown unable to do much and we don't know when that will end or if it will end entirely. No matter what happens, clearly the time for virtual spaces is here. We're not going to spend the next decade just sitting on the couch binging on Netflix. Human interactions are too important. We are interactions have been stagnant for over 20 years because there wasn't compelling reason to make them work. Now with the world a patchwork of different travel restrictions, having $700 or so worth of hardware for entertainment or business that used to be done in person, but can't always be done that way now, starts to make sense. Being able to work outside an office environment on video check has become a critical skill. Some careers are now entirely dependent on it. Online comms are an equally critical social skill. If you are bad at text messaging, good luck getting a day in 2022. 
we are set to become part of an increasing number of personal and business interactions. There's no way around it. We don't know what that will look like, but we want that to be accessible to us and to be comfortable using it. I can totally see having a coffee with a girl in VR space with this exact setup before actually meeting up with her in person. The tech is good enough for that now, as is. Likewise business. I really would not want to fly to Shanghai on business at the moment. But I could do a four hour remote presentation in this setup with absolutely no problem provided they have something similar. It's there, it's ready. Is it real? No, of course not. But if it's more than good enough and people are going to realize that it's cheap enough, it's available, it's good enough. And life and business have to go on. We are is one of the many tools we're probably going to use to make that happen. So whether or not you get the power, whether or not you invest in VR, my advice is that the time has come to keep a much closer eye on VR in general. I think other areas like AR will stay slow. They aren't there yet and are missing key things to get there. But VR is ready and we should all keep a close eye on that space. I do like the power a great deal, and I'm comfortable giving it a thumbs up. Although with all of the usual caveats about Kickstarters, come on, you all know the deal there by now. It is an excellent price. If you're interested, the link is in the description box below. That's it for today. Please don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, and tell your friends about me if you like what I do. When people vouch for my competence, it really helps because of the whole, you know, issue with how I look. It makes a big difference when you speak up and means more to me than you know. Thank you. More videos are coming soon. I got a bunch all half finished waiting on parts, but I'll wrap them up soon. As always, thanks for watching. And if I can do it, anyone can do it.